if you could be any glyph, which would you be and why? I would be the X, because it stands on two feet and hold up two hands. I might want to choose a Chinese character, but I'm not sure I know the name of the glyph. But I have a, fa uh, a favorite work of uh, calligraphy by Wang Shiji. In, in the midst of all the more complicated characters, there's a huge X-like stroke. It just opens up the density of the callig calligraphic structure with a really dramatic gesture. And I, and I love the way the density yields to space like that. What is your process of finding new calligraphy inspirations? Ah, yes, to find new calligraphy inspirations, I uh, tend to uh, flip through books or travel, and, uh, look through uh, any sort of collection of calligraphy that I can find, and basically I look for highly irregular marks and systems of marks. So I think what I do is I run away from the gray grid of standard Latin typography. And uh, my definition of calligraphy has become, it's the opposite of typography. Uh, so if I can find something that shows some weird, kinky, odd, uh, denial of the grid in one way or the other, or some strange way of doing counterspaces that is so extreme that you think, ha, huh, did they need a counterspace at all? They, they've, they've squeezed it down to almost nothing. Uh, Any time where the white is so put under pressure between black forms that it absolutely screams to be allowed to live, you know, I really like that. I, I think I see marks almost as living beings that, that are struggling together in their compositions. Um, and, and acting out their frustrations and their passions. And when I, can, when I can see that kind of life in the letter and when I can see that they don't want to cooperate with the rest, that's what I really like. That's what makes calligraphy exciting for me. I even took a photo of one of the images you showed in your slides of the Arabic calligraphy that had really tiny, tiny, thin white counters. Yes, yes. I use that with students a lot precisely because you, you have to pay great attention to leave the, the, the white space open at all. And the, 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 the narrower you get, the, the, the more the white glows like an electric light to, until, until it's just extinguished. Uh, and that, that is something that goes so against the normal uh, Latin alphabet based of balancing spaces. Our, our tradition is really one of, of balance. Coming from Greek geometry, we want rounded, rectangular, and triangular shapes to live in a, in a very well-balanced harmony. Nobody's going to stand up and shout. All the letters sit nicely together on the page. And then, for the sake of dramatic uh, graphics, you put a, 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 a colored initial at the top left corner or something like that. Well, I don't really find that. That's not designing to me. That's not creating graphic um, ensembles. And so that Arabic calligraphy, the Kufic script that you mentioned, is one where the, the, the calligrapher is living every letter. He's really there sculpting it in space with white and black. Do you feel your calligraphy has influenced you as a person and vice versa? Oh my, yes. Oh gosh. Uh, absolutely. Every stage has been an exploration of many things, including myself. But uh, the, the moment that changed everything was when I started to write my own texts. And I simply felt I had to start doing that. I didn't think I had anything particularly to say, but it felt dishonest to go running off for some fine text that was worthy of my calligraphy. And so I simply started writing, well, it began as dictation. The BBC radio uh, news was playing in the background and I would write what I could remember and then listen some more and write that and listen some more. And it kept me writing. And what I wanted to do was write. But in, in that process, a voice started to speak and I started to write my thoughts spontaneously. And then it got serious and I started really bleeding onto the page with my most intimate thoughts. And uh, sometimes those things are put away so that nobody sees them. Sometimes I show them to my family. Sometimes they're written illegibly, or sometimes ink is put over them afterwards. But I've got to a stage where I either truly write like a diary, uh, so very, very honestly, and, and no beating around the bush. Uh, about my feelings and frustrations and hopes and, you know, what it is to get older and all of that. What love means as you go through life and how that changes too with time. Um, and then also th thoughts that seem to almost take the form of poetry. And it's been a huge surprise to discover that I am a bit of a poet after all. I can write good funny verse, what we call doggerel in English, you know, um, 
cheap and silly poems, but somehow they manage to still have a nice edge to them. But when I write set of thoughts in a literary way, I'm sometimes rather surprised with what comes out. And I will say also that that usually happens not with a pen, but with another technique I use, which is metal stamps. These are metal punches used normally for uh, striking uh, codes into machine parts. So they're small pieces of metal, and they um, are very hard, and I usually stamp them into a collage or a paper uh, using a small hammer. And when you do that, you have to pick up the A and strike, and you have to pick up the B and strike and put it back. And so it's very slow. And by the time the first word is finished, you think of the second word, and then the third, and then you think of the sentence. And so it allows a kind of, although it's a highly rational process, letter by letter, it, all, it allows an entirely intuitive way of constructing the sentence slower than when we speak or when we type. What would you like the Etaipai attendees to take home with them from your talk? That what we're doing here is incredibly exciting and incredibly important, and that nobody should ever think that it's just some little, little area of, uh, at the corner of civilization. It's absolutely central, and that the world is changing, and typography and calligraphy are there, are important, and will be there for the future.